everyone a very good morning to all of you and a very happy and prosperous diwali to all of you so let's begin today's class because if we want to prosper in our, in our lives we need to have knowledge and this video is going to give you that okay so the very first thing is the live sessions for rbi sabhi and abad and then here is our mobile application and these are the various modes through which you can connect with us if you feel any kind of uh, need for the guidance so the very first question that we have is where ha uh, where have the conference uh, confederation of indian industry and the indian oil corporation launched the vayu amrit project so here guys this project has been launched in punjab okay now in punjab's sangrur this uh, vayu amrit project has been launched now i hope you are recollecting something from the word sangrur this is the district where asia's largest compressed biogas plant has been recently inaugurated okay so you need to remember and in this manner you need to connect the dots okay if a place is in the news you need to recollect your facts of uh, you, your facts that you have read about that particular place or about the particular person or the organization okay and when you start connecting the dots it will be very easy for you to remember all the facts okay so what is this vayu amrit project now vayu amrit vayu is air amrit is to make the air purify okay make the air more and more pure for us to inhale so it is basically a crop residue management initiative because we all know punjab and haryana has a problem of stubble burning and the smoke that that is emitted out of the stubble burning comes to delhi so delhi and the surrounding regions and it is causing a lot of air pollution which is a very big problem in today's time in order to resolve that problem the government a body C uh, confederation of indian industry and this psu of the government indian oil corporation both of them has launched the vayu amrit project now understand this point that the technology which both of these organizations will be using to purify the air has not been revealed okay so it is just the announcement that vayu amrit project will be implement but what kind of technology will they use that has not been disclosed and uh, in my opinion we don't have to go into that as well because that is not very important that for understanding purpose if you are curious that what kind of technology will they deploy to purify the air then you can search more about it once the news comes on okay so we have discussed the news now i want to talk about the other initiatives that have been taken regarding the air pollution okay so the very first thing is the smoke tower okay in in india we have the air pollution especially very severe in delhi and the ncit so in order to prevent the smoke from the inhalation by the people the delhi government and the center have collaborated to establish the smoke tower so in delhi we have smoke towers at two places first is connaught place and another one is anand vihar so remember this another initiative is the sat the commission for air quality management in national capital region and adjoining areas act of 2021 this commission was est established particularly to resolve this problem of air pollution and have a statutory body that would monitor the activities which have been done to uh, prevent the air pollution from happening okay now this person mm kutti is the chairperson of this commission at present one more initiative has been taken that is the national clean air program which was launched in 2019 jan by the ministry of environment forest and climate change the target of this program is to achieve 20 to 30% reduction in the particulate matter concentrations by 2024 by keeping 2017 as the base year for the comparison of the particular particulate matter in the air okay i hope you are understanding what does this target mean it means the reduction in the particulate matter two main type of particulate matters are found 2.5 and pm okay so we need to reduce that so that we can prevent the respiratory organs of the humans uh, for a long period of time now under this plan only 120 uh, 
122 non attainment cities were identified so these cities have very severe levels of air pollution these cities were identified on the basis of the air quality data of 2014 to 18 okay now why is this fact important because this is a central government scheme right it is an initiative of the government and therefore my new details are also asked from you in the examination so therefore it is important for you to know so from 2014 to 18 data was assessed to identify these 122 cities whether they are performing uh, the performing good in terms of preventing the air pollution and undertaking any measures so that is the reason these cities have been selected now who is going to monitor these cities that is state pollution control board as well as in the smart cities delhi is also a part of the 122 non attainment cities so in the smart cities integrated command and control centers have been established to look uh, to monitor the air pollution levels and the activities that have been undertaken to reduce them. okay now guys all such facts that we have discussed now these facts are important from exam perspective mai aise nahi bata rahi hu aapko ye important hai inse direct question bante hain then you wonder that these questions were not there in spotlight ma'am ne bhi nahi padhaya fir bhi ek question aa gaya to ye to spotlight hi bekar hai aisa nahi hai spotlight is very useful for all of you if you consider it and prepare it prepare from it thoroughly okay if you keep it as your base source and then move to another source okay then it will be very very beneficial okay what do i mean by base source that base source is when you have completed spotlight thoroughly then only you can look out for another source in order to add up on your information otherwise you don't have to look out for any other information source because spotlight in itself is enough now this much is clear i hope question number 2 is how many positive indigenization list have been released by the ministry of defense as of october 2022 uh, so here four indigenization list have been released by the prime minister so this fourth list bans 101 items not exactly bans but it aims to reduce or nullify the import of 101 defense items and the focus is on the indigenous uh, manufacturing of this uh, these items now guys i hope all of you are aware that def expo 2022 is going on in gandhinagar path to pride is the theme of this defense exhibition and this is the 12th edition of this exhibition now during the exhibition a very very important breakthrough has taken place a very important development has taken place that is our prime minister has raised the defense export target so what is the new target the new target is dollar 5 billion rupees 40000 crores by 2025 as far as the production defense production target is concerned so it is dollar 22 billion by 2025 so these are the two new targets which you all should remember because they can be asked from you at any stage of your examination be it your phase 1 be it your phase 2 be it your interview okay if your examination is coming near and even if it is not then also the defense targets are very important because this has now become a static information for you as well moving ahead in which state is the disa air base being developed so it is being developed in gujarat disa gujarat disa is the is the name of the place okay so disa in banaskantha district of gujarat alongside the india pakistan border and this new air force station will basically reduce the gap between two air force stations in gujarat one is in bhuj and another one is uttarlai uh, agar aapne bhuj movie dekhi hai ajay devgan ki then you would understand it better because bhuj air base was destroyed by pakistan and uh, there was the situation of emergency and the immediate support was also not uh, there for the air force okay air force station because of the long distance now this kind of situation will be prevented once this disa air force station will be create okay now we are talking about the air force so we need to look on certain facts related to indian air force 
फर्स्ट इज दी हेडक्वार्टर वेर इज दर्टर ऑफ इंडियन एयरफोर्स न्यू डेली में ठीक है सारी सारी आर्म फोर्सेस के हेडक्वार्टर डेली में ही है नेक्स्ट इज द मोटो नभ स्पर्शम दिप्तम टच द स्काय विद ग्लोरी ओके दिस इज द मोटो एंड समटाइम्स द मोटो आर आस्ट इन द एग्जामिनेशन सो इट इज अगेन अ स्टैटिक फैक्ट फॉर यू टू रिमेंबर द मोटो ऑफ द मेजर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन एंड इंडियन एयरफोर्स इन इट सेल्फ इट डज नॉट नीड एनी वर्ड्स टू क्लैरिफाई इट्स इंपॉर्टेंस सो नभ स्पर्शम दिप्तम टच द स्काय विद ग्लोरी हेडक्वार्टर्स वी हैव डिस्कस न्यू डेली में है हु इज द चीफ The chief is B R Chaudhary. ठीक है. Remember, B R Chaudhary is the Air Force chief. अब chief की बात करें तो revise कर लेते हैं other chiefs को भी. So Indian Army chief is Manoj Pandey. Indian Navy chief is R Hari Kumar. ठीक है. And the chief of defence staff at present is General Anil Chauhan. So these are very important positions. Do remember. One more fact. related to the air force only that is indian air force operate seven commands now under these commands uh, we have the air force stations operating so these commands act as the regional headquarters for the air force stations and the major headquarter is in new delhi okay the headquarters of all these commands so the western command is in delhi south western air command is gandhinagar maintenance command nagpur south southern air command tiruvananthapuram ट्रेनिंग कमांड बैंगलोर ईस्टर्न एयर कमांड शिलोंग सेंट्रल एयर कमांड अलाहाबाद ओके नाउ गाइज दीज सेवन कमांड्स ऑफ द एयर फोर्स आर इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू डू नो बिकॉज दिस इज अगेन अ वेरी बेसिक करंट अफेयर पार्ट नॉट एग्जैक्टली करंट अफेयर बट इट इज योर जनरल अवेयरनेस पार्ट यू शुड बी अवेयर ऑफ दी कमांड्स स्पेशली बिकॉज राइट नाउ द गवर्नमेंट इज फोकसिंग ऑन क्रिएटिंग द इंटीग्रेटेड थिएटर कमांड now what is integrated theater command i hope all of you must have heard about it because it was there in the news for a long period of time but in case agar aapne nahi suna hai so let me tell you integrated theater command i am just going to take two more seconds here and then we will shift to another question so integrated theater command is basically the unit of the defense force which will amalgamate the navy army and the air force why do we need to amalgamate all the forces because we need to obtain the synergy out of these forces abhi kya hota hai that the air force operate on its own navy operate on its own and army operates on its own okay theek hai then what happens whenever there is any kind of skirmishes at the border so it takes a lot of time to procure all the support from all these forces so in order to so uh, reduce or eliminate that situation from happening the government is planning to establish integrated theater command char se panch integrated theater command create kiye jayenge now on which committee did india uh, plan to establish the itc integrated theater command so it is guys shekatkar committee now this is also a very important question for your examination theek hai so do remember shekatkar committee is the committee which recommended the government to create the itc and it is the same committee which recommended the government to establish the chief of defense staff okay on which anil chauhan is sitting at present moving ahead what is india's rank in the internet freedom sub index of freedom in the world report of 2022 so here 51st is the right answer now guys before discussing this index we need to understand the structure of this index so freedom in the world this is the main in, main report and this has three sub indices first index is your global freedom and second one is your internet freedom and third one is the democracy freedom theek okay? hai so these are the three sub indices and all these three sub indices have different number of countries as a टॉप कंट्रीज बॉटम कंट्रीज इंडिया इज रैन पारामीटर सो सब में अलग अलग है ठीक है नाउ लेट्स डिस्कस द इंडेक्स आई होप यू आर क्लियरली एबल टू सी इट ओके लेट मी जूम इट आउट सो ग्लोबल फ्रीडम इंडेक्स नाउ वी हैव टू हंड्रेड टेन कंट्रीज विच हैव बीन असेस्ड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर इंडेक्स now on which basis are we assessing the freedom political freedom 
as well as civil liberties on these two bases we are judging the countries as free partly free or not free so which countries are completely free norway finland and sweden you can clearly see these three countries have the same score across both the categories both the parameters okay so this much is important Nor norway finland and sweden apart from this no need to remember the other countries now india's rank what is india's rank india's rank is 66 so india is a partly free country okay we are the largest functional democracy but still we are the uh, 66th position but understand this point we are at the 66th position out of the 210 countries but still if more improvement is there in terms of the political rights as well as the civil liberties then it would be very good for the citizens of india now there is one more shock in this index that you will get to know okay i am not revealing it now but that is a shock for sure parameter wise ranking of india so as far as political liberty is concerned india's rank is 33 it's not the rank it's the uh, score which india has obtained so 33 is the score in political liberty and civil liberty may be same score okay so it makes it very easy for you to remember the score of india in both the parameters then bottom page syria tibet has been recognized as a region and it has also been given ranking and on that note i remember that indian kashmir was also given a separate ranking in this global freedom index so kashmir was categorized as a separate region in the index itself okay now south sudan is at the bottom internet freedom index Now it assesses the freedom on three parameters. First is your obstacles to access the internet. Second is your limit on content. And third is your violation of user rights. So these are the three parameters on which the internet freedom index has been created. Now a total of 70 countries were judged. Earlier what we saw, 210 countries were judged. 70 countries were judged. Iceland is at top. India's rank is at 51st position. Now, India's rank, now here understand that in the Global Freedom Index, scores were given for the parameters. In the Internet Freedom Index, rankings have been given. I know it's a little bit uh, hazy, but what do you do? It's a bit weird, but you have to because the exam will be asked here. Okay? So, first is obstacles to access. So, here India's rank is 13th. So, if you don't have access to the Internet, what do you do? Limit on content, 21st. Violation of users' rights, 17th rank. So you can clearly see we are not at all free as far as the usage of internet is concerned. Then bottom pe to China hai. Last is the democracy scores and this is the shock in this index. The largest functional democracy of the world is not there in the rank. Okay. So uh, 29 countries are assessed. Top is Estonia. Uh, then India is not ranked and bottom is at, uh, at bottom we have Turkmenistan which is an authoritarian regime, okay. Question number fifth is, according to the World Steel Association, global steel trade will reduce by 2.3% in 2022 due to the increase in inflation and high interest rates. Which of the following country is the major consumer of steel? So the country which is the major consumer, do you know how much does it consume? It consumes more than half of the world's steel. Which is it? It is China. China consumes more than half of the world's steel. Now what does this World Steel Association say? Now here I'm going to ask one question from all of you. The headquarters of this organization provide it in the comment section. Now, global steel demand has reduced by 2.3% in 2022. Basically, it is predicting that in this current year, uh, including the remaining months, the global steel demand is going to reduce. However, it will increase in the next year because the expectation is that the governments around the world are going to spend on infrastructure and steel is the basic building core of the building block of the infrastructure so steel demand is going to increase but the increment would be of one percent instead of 2.2 percent which was forecasted earlier. okay 
Now, China consumes 51% of the global consumption. And in 2022, it has been seen that the demand for steel has reduced in China also, okay, by 4% in 2022. Now, here we have the countries. Now, remember, this data has been taken from the World Steel Association's website only. So, in 2021, the top steel producing companies were these. Okay, first is China's group. Second is ArcelorMittal. And then we have companies going on. Okay? You don't remember, uh, need to remember the companies. Just remember the position of Tata Steel Group. It is at the 10th position. Then the countries. So as far as the uh, production is concerned, China is at the first position and India is at the second position. So it is a very uh, crucial position for India. Okay, Remember. Question number six is, recently the people of Ukraine won the Sakharov Prize for Freedom of Thought, which international agency gives this award. So this award is given by the European Union. Okay. European Union gives this annual award for the people who showed dissidence against their uh, government or against the, uh, you can say, the authoritarian regime or the Tana Shahi ke against basically, jo bhi log apni freedom of thought represent karte hain, unko ye award diya. The prize is named after the former Soviet dissident Andrei Sekharov and it has been established in 1988 and it has been given since then. Question number seven is which of the following stock brokerage firm opens it, opened its first ever women only digital center in Bangalore in October 2022? So here HDFC Securities is the right answer. Okay, so it is the first ever women only uh, digital center, but it will not cater to women only. It will also fulfill the needs of the men also, the men investors. But it's just that the staff of this center would be all women. So it has been established at Bangalore. Now, in the city of Bangalore itself, various financial institutions have opened certain uh, initiatives recently basically in the month of October. So, Karnataka Bank has established its analytical center of excellence in Bangalore in October. The, uh, SBI has established its first premium dedicated branch for startups in Bangalore only. Paytm Mall has launched its beta version of open network for digital commerce again in Bangalore. Okay, so these are the three important initiatives that took place in Bangalore. Question number eight is recently Dr. Subramaniam K has been appointed as principal scientist of the Aditya L1 uh, mission. Along with this job position, Subramaniam K continues to be a senior solar scientist at. So he is a senior solar scientist at UR Rao Satellite Center under ISRO, obviously. Aditya L1 is going to be India's first observatory class space based solar mission. Okay, so what is going to happen? Aditya L1 will be launched in 2023. It is expected to be launched in, launched in 2023 on a PSLV XL rocket. Okay, rocket ka naam bhi important hota hai. Sometimes it is asked. Now, what is this L1? L1, guys, this uh, is this point. Large range point is known as the L1. Aditya is sun. And Lagrange point is the position of this Aditya L1 mission. So we are going to send this observatory here. And from here, it is going to observe sun and send data back to earth. That's the basic idea of this uh, Aditya L1 observatory. Okay. Recently, which country has sent its observatory for the sun's uh, study? This is your task. Do tell me in the comment section. Uh, who has become the first Indian and first Asian to be appointed as an independent expert on racism and related intolerance at the UN Humans right, Human Rights Council. So here KP Ashwini is the right answer. So before moving ahead, let me inform you that this Human Rights Council is based in Geneva. At present, 47 countries are members of this council. Okay, that's the upper limit of the members. 47 member country uh, uh, member countries are the members. So she is KP Ashwini, 
and she is a Dalit scholar. Okay, why did I mention Dalit scholar especially? Because in order to show you that this is the opportunity that the Dalit people are getting and we should all be glad and we should uh, basically work towards removing the caste-based discrimination in India. Otherwise, we all cannot grow as a country and as human beings as well. Now, coming to this news. So, she has become the first Indian as well as the first Asian to be appointed as an independent expert on racism and related issues at the UNHRC. The last question, Barbara Metcalf has received the Sir Sayyid Excellence International Award for 2022. Which country does she belong? So she belongs to US. So she is an American historian and a scholar of uh, South Asian history and Islam. She has won this Sir Sayyid Excellence International Award. Now, do you know which university gives this award? Yes. An Indian university gives this award and the name of the university is Aligarh Muslim University. So this is important. This can itself become a question. Aligarh Muslim University gives this Sir Sayyid Ahmed International Award. Sir Sayyid Ahmed was a freedom fighter, was a scholar as well. He was a reformist and he was born in 1817 to 1898. Uh, in 2022, we are celebrating the 205th anniversary of Sir Sayyid Ahmed Khan. So here this lecture ends. I hope you have enjoyed the content. If you have anything to discuss with me, you can put it in the comment section below. So a very happy Diwali again. Enjoy your holidays, but at the same time work on improving your learning as well as skills. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Happy Diwali again.